By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Hello everyone, this is Chelsea, host of the Sticky Eddie podcast, where we discuss addiction and the many levels on which it can affect us all. Addiction and mental health go hand in hand more often than not, so you are in the right place listening to my buddy Tim McCarthy. This is the 20 Tim Minutes podcast. Yo, I'm back. It's Tuesday, hopefully. I am your host, Tim McCarthy. This is 20 Tim Minutes, a podcast that focuses on mental health, humor, insight, personal stories. You know the deal. Like, subscribe, upvote with a thumbs up. Those people are weird. Um, Thank you for tuning in once again. Um, I always like it. Episode 43, kind of a shitty number. Anyone's favorite number 43? If it is, let me talk to you because I don't, that's weird. Introduction was done by Chelsea with the Sticky Eddie podcast. Uh, I love the name Eddie. It's about her dad. So her podcast, she lost her dad, Eddie, December 2020. Uh, He suffered from alcoholism and his addiction is what eventually took his life. Chelsea talks about the duality addiction creates between the person we love and the personality their affliction creates. And I was just on her show. And guess what episode number it was? 43. Just kidding. It was 20 and it was unintentional. I think this is my second podcast. I did a 20 minute episode for someone's podcast. Chelsea's awesome. We had a really good interview. You can go check that out. The Sticky Eddie podcast, Two Eyes and Sticky Eddie. Eddie's a great fucking name. And it's not Eddie spelled E-D-D-Y. It's Eddie the E-D-D-I-E. Phenomenal name. I love it. But uh, thank you again for that introduction. Chelsea, you are a peach and I love you. Um, What's going on, guys? Yeah. Um, 2010minutes.com. Go there. Get all your information on me. Buy some merch. It's on sale right now. It's fucking buy the merch, people. Buy the merch. Just buy it, and I'll send it to you. It's all I need. Um, and you can also go to 2010minutes to see uh, all my interviews I've been in and uh, past interviews as well. Um, so coming up right now, your boy needs some help. Coming up on a year in November, and I have not won one fucking award. And if I'm going to be pro positive about me in this podcast, I need to win an award to make myself feel better. Okay. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I need some fucking gratification. Just something to gas me up about this. So it's called the discover pods awards. I don't, have you ever heard of it? I did. Um, and there's different categories you can vote for. And I think the ones that, um, go with me is there's a health and fitness one, a comedy one, interview style, new and debut, which is kind of like what I want. I want the rookie of the year because you only got one shot to win it. So I want to be rookie of the year this year. That's all I'm asking. And then there's also best overall podcast. I'll shoot for the stars. I'm not going to get my hopes up for even being nominated for that one, even though I am the best 20 minute podcast that focuses on mental health by a host named Tim. But let me get in on the new debut podcast nominations. That's what I want. That's what I'm going for. If I win something else, it's okay. But rookie of the year, I want it. I want it so bad. If you didn't listen to my most recent episode, it was with Nate Carroll, uh, push-up world record holder, million push-ups, domestic uh, violence survivor, helps raise money with the Tunnel of Towers Foundation, uh, which is its fallen first responder program. Um, the Tunnel of Towers Foundation honors the sacrifice of firefighter Stephen Siller, who laid down his life to save others on 9-11. Um, and the first responder program provides mortgage-free homes to families in need. So this dude, 1.5 million push-ups in one calendar year, 365 days a year. Kind of remarkable. Kind of crazy. We had a great interview. Nate was the man. And uh, speaking of 9-11, that was just the other day. And... Uh, it's always just chilling on that date because uh, when people say never forget, you don't. All right. Everyone knows where they were, hopefully. I was in high school at Archbishop Williams. It was like a Catholic school. I had no business being there. I dropped out and switched to North Quincy High. Red Raider for life, baby. But anyway, I remember just being in class. It was English class and uh, just shit went down. We were all confused. We saw the second tower get hit by an airplane live on TV, and everyone was like, what the fuck is going on? 
And I believe we got sent home. I'm not too sure, um, which I think it did. But yeah, that day, man, absolutely fucking insane. And I'll go down these like rabbit holes of like watching people like jump out the building or like listening to people's last phone calls with their significant others or or talking or listening to interviews with people like today that have to still live with that. And what I didn't know, like, well, I, I knew it, but like, it was like out of sight, out of mind was like the ramifications years, years uh, down the road. Like um, my buddy was telling me about like New York, like firefighters and cops that like get cancer. Like the, the number of deaths, like after nine 11 of like medical issues is like astronomical. And I was like, yeah, that makes fucking total sense. So like, the ramifications like still linger till like fucking years later and just super unfortunate. And yeah, it was, um, it's like, uh, I can't even explain it. I, I was, when I was in New York, I was at the, uh, one Memorial, the, the fucking Memorial site. Uh, it was like beautiful. I could, I didn't have time to go over there and it looked beautiful and I, I probably would have cried the whole time cause I'm an emotional cat. It just, you know, and then like, oh my God, you know what pisses me off about that is the people that go and like take like selfies in front of it. or get like a photo in front of it. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you taking a selfie with a bunch of people that died? Like you can just say you were there. I don't need to see it. It's okay. You can take a photo at Fenway Park and not watch the game. That's fine. But Twin Tower Memorial, how about you just, how about you just look at it? Put your phone away. Okay. That's all you got to do. But yeah, um, yeah, I go down rabbit holes with the whole 9-11 thing. It's, uh, it's like so sad and, and just so fucked up. And uh, I just feel for like anyone that still has to deal with that, especially someone that lost uh, like a family member, a friend or anything. But uh, so to parlay into that and more of a positive is I went down to DC. I did it. I went down and saw Kesha. First off, I'm not a big politics guy. I like history in the sense of like statues and how they made statues back then. Like the Lincoln Memorial, how in the fuck was that made? How was that made? I'll never understand it. And I was talking to my therapist just now that like even painters, like the Sistine Chapel, like that thing is like beautiful. Like people don't paint like that anymore, but it was like so long ago, it's like, I, I just don't get it. I do not get how monuments are made. I just, especially back then, now I get it. But like, it's remarkable, like how detailed it was. Like they made like, like Peyton Manning's head at the Hall of Fame look like a, an idiot or um, Christian, Ren I don't know, golf, Ronaldo, is that his name? Like it just looked awful. But back then, like that looks like Abe Lincoln, looks like he can get up and come and kill everybody. And it's just remarkable, but. DC, I've been there once and it was fun, but now I went down. I was like, damn, this city sucks. I, I even like walked by the Capitol building, didn't even put two and two together. That was like the Capitol building where that shit went down. And there's a lot of security around everywhere, which made a lot of sense. Um, but again, I just, uh, it was good weather, but more importantly, I went down to go see Kesha. My girl crossed off the bucket list. Great show, pretty good venue. And yeah, I might have uh, got a little teary out on two of her songs, but it was just so cool to see her. And uh, it was fun watching the crowd because everyone was so into it, including your boy, including your boy. And um, yeah, I just had a lot of fun down there. But yeah, you guys should have came. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have uh, saw my little snaps of her being like, oh, 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 oh. But anyway, um, yeah, so I just talked to my therapist not too long ago. Um, and just, I, I've been realizing I've been spiraling and I told her like, I don't know why. And like my mood swings have been very quick. Like I went to work yesterday, like in a great mood saying hi to everybody. And then like 10 minutes later, I just didn't want to talk to anybody, but I felt bad because my energy was so high and they still wanted me. Like I'm that guy at work that's like, eh, like trying to make people laugh. So when I come into work, not like that, everyone's like, oh, what's wrong? And that's when I get more annoyed. Because I'm always like, you know what? Michael Jordan didn't score 50 points every night. But I'm not Michael Jordan. I'm more like a Steve Kerr or maybe a Luke Longley in, on that team. Or maybe a, maybe a Tony Kukoc on a good day. So, I, and I'm still trying to figure out because I'm not getting angry as I used to be. I'm more like defeated and tired. Where I'm just like, 
yeah, things will get better and I will get past this. So I'm a little bit positive, but even then I'm like, oh, this is like brutal. And I understand it's like, I'm working a little bit more OT, lack of sleep. I'm eating like shit, not going to the gym as much. Like I know what I need to do, but I just won't do it. Like I know what to fix. Like I'm such a hypocrite with that. Like I tell people like, oh, do this and that. And then I don't do it. Like who am I to give you um, tips when I'm not even doing it? And another thing that we had a conversation about, I had a conversation with myself on this episode not too long ago where I was saying like, do we really deserve to be happy? Like, yeah, we all should be happy. But what I was thinking was I take medicine to help my bipolar ADHD and my anxiety. Years, like 100 years, 200 years ago, people didn't have like that type of stuff. Like if I lived back then, I was who I was supposed to be. Am I supposed, is this the person I'm supposed to be? because I'm taking meds. Again, we all want to be happy, but like, do we deserve it? Is that how I was made, how I was created, how I was supposed to live? And it kind of, it kind of sounds negative in a way, but it is kind of true and she understood that. So I told her, I was like, I feel like I'm taking a cheat code in life. Like I'm taking pills to fix, quote unquote, of what's wrong with me. And she, man, she's so much smarter than me because I'm an idiot. I dropped out of college. Uh, C's and D's get degrees in high school. I'm glad they didn't put the GPA on a high school diploma, but I would be screwed. Well, I was already screwed. I dropped out of college. And she said, she's like, well, if it's like a cheat code, like what about like the other medicine that helps people like people with cancer or people that can't see and there was glasses invented. And I'm just like staring at her via Zoom. And I'm like, I'm like, why do you have to be so logical and right? And she was just laughing. She was like, no, I know what you mean. I'm like, do you? Do you know what I mean? But like that, she is so good at opening parts of my brain that I can see from a different angle. So she was like a hundred percent right, and I'm just being like Debbie Downer. Like, nah. I feel like I am a realist though, for the most part. Like, I can sound negative, and you might agree that what I just said was negative. But I do feel like that. I do feel like we were created to live a certain life. Like, I'm always. I don't talk about religion or politics. I don't get to do it, but I'm not religious. I love people that are. I love people that pray for me. Like, if you want to say a prayer for me, I will take that 11 out of 10 times. I respect that. I don't know how we got here. I think think if I had to pick what I was, I think it's agnostic. Like, there's something out there. I just don't know what the fuck it is. If something showed up, I would be like, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. But again, I'm actually going on a religious rant right now, which I don't want to do. Um, But yeah, just like, I had a conversation about this. I'm like, with a coworker, I was like, nothing matters. And they took it like bad at first. I was like, no, no, no. It's like, it's like we created all of this, like work, debt, um, just like everything, like buildings. Like we created everything in this world and we could die any second and it does not matter. I could die, anyone else could die and the world keeps on turning. So you do have to, hopefully you want to be happy and make yourself happy. But I try to remind myself like when things are getting bad or if I'm spiraling, I'm just like, None of this fucking matters. Like I could quit my job and go live in the woods and befriend a bunch of coyotes. You know what I'm saying? So I try to be positive like that and and, and try to share that with you because I have like a weird, I just have like, that's like my bipolar in, in a sense is my thoughts go back and forth of like stuff. I'm like, yeah, nothing matters. But I'm like, do I matter? No, I do. Right? Right? But yeah, that's my thought on everything about taking meds and living life. I would have loved to seen how I would survive back in back in the day. I feel like this is a running gag with me, and I always just like put it with John Quincy Adams because that's where I'm from originally. It's Quincy. Yeah, it sounds like Quincy with a Z. So the people outside of Massachusetts get acquainted with that. All right, it's not Quincy. It's Quincy. Step up. But I always relate to him because it's easier because I don't know years. I don't, I'm not, again, history was not my strong suit. I don't know years. I don't know dates. Don't, don't quiz me on anything. So back then it's like, I want to know how I would have survived. Like when it snows or rains out, I'm, I'm checked out. No, I'm good. Don't want to shovel. Don't want to drive in it. I would, yeah, I would just be awful. Especially pimples. So I'm, I'm wearing this hat, my XFL hat. I got this pretty sweet pimple on my forehead. Like it was like a high school reunion. And I haven't seen this thing since like, 2004 couldn't believe it but that's why i wear hats so i can cover it up and i always pick scabs are you guys a scab picker i love picking scabs i love popping pimples i don't like watching pimples be popped unless it's a blackhead blackheads are like 
like winning like a scratch ticket for like 50 bucks on a two dollar ticket and they they come rarely but when you pop them man ooh, those things are fucking good um but yeah i wrote down put your carts away i don't know how i was going to segue into that but if you have a shopping cart and you don't put it back where it belongs you're a piece of shit so that's just a quick psa okay just make sure you do that look out for somebody else that job sucks picking up carts I like the carts that like stop rolling after you leave the parking lot because people fucking steal those things. But regardless, if I catch you leaving uh, a shopping cart, we're going to talk. I love the people that probably aren't from Massachusetts and they hear me talk and they're like, oh, I like your podcast, but I don't know what you're saying half the time. And I'm like, shopping cart guy. That's whatever it is. Oh, former guest Al Snow in the news. TMZ. This guy saved a kid from drowning in the ocean all right i'm not saying i had anything to do with it but butterfly effect okay if he never went on my podcast who knows what could have happened okay so like again nothing matters but things happen they just happen everything's a one in a million shot okay i don't think people realize that is whatever we're doing right now is supposed to happen like that is the percentage of shit happening like like, yeah, I could like a million dollars would like fall on my head, which would be a one in a million chance. But the reason it's not is because it's not happening. So whatever happens in my life is supposed to happen. It's fu- I, I, Again, I don't know if I'm on drugs or not. I got to get drug tested and I haven't been doing any drugs. I didn't think this episode was going to go off the rails, but it is. I'm pretty manic, I think, right now because I'm on like four hours of sleep because of all my overtime. And dude, I'm killing it. I'm killing this 20 minute game. I have so many notes that I don't need to say. Now, so if you don't know, uh, when I first started the podcast, I came out with a t-shirt, uh, which sold out, which was nice. I should have just remade them. And um, the reason I made them was because I wanted to raise money for my local suicide prevention center, which is the, the Plymouth County Suicide Prevention Coalition, because I wanted to support something that means a lot uh, and something lo- local that I know. Like giving it to like uh, the NAMI or, or the AFSP is good, but like it's like those big organizations that always need help, obviously, but I wanted to help something local that nonprofit that they have struggles with, with local towns. So I wanted to help them. And out of the percentage of shirts I sold, I I gave them like 300 bucks out of it. And, uh, I didn't think it was a lot, but they were very appreciative of it. And, uh, they were like, Oh, this would help out so much with classes. Like the number of books this will buy. So I became friends with them. And, uh, there's an event coming up that I got invited to uh, that I'm going to go to. And uh, and like going to Kesha, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. So I need to get out of my comfort zone and go meet people and stuff. But there is a uh, event where it's like uh, it's a community conversation about mental health, wellness, suicide, and suicide prevention. There's going to be pizza there. So that's how they sold me. But the lady, um, I forget her fucking name. I'm the worst. And that's going to happen to me when I go. They, someone's going to be like, hey, I'm Rob. And like, I'll shake his hand. I'm like, oh, Rob? Rob's your name? Because you're supposed to say it three times. Rob, nice to meet you. All right, Rob, I'll talk to you. And I'm like, what's his name? Is it Eddie? And then I'm like, fuck, I just fucked myself on that one. Hopefully, if someone there is named Eddie, that's going to be a sign. That's going to be a one in a million shot that was supposed to happen. You feel? You feel? Um, but she wants like print out like my media kit that I give like potential guests so they can see who I am and stuff. And she like... She wants to like introduce me to people and I, f- I get like secondhand embarrassment anytime I talk about my podcast outside of this room. If I run into you and like you bring up the podcast, I love it. I appreciate it, but I get so embarrassed that like I talk about it when someone says something good about it. I'm like, yeah, it is good, isn't it? I'm fucking killing it, but I love it. So going to this event and like me meeting somebody, I'm like, oh, I do a podcast. It's like, oh, how well are you doing? I'm like, well, um... I get like 10,000 downloads in like a year, which I'm coming up on. You guys need to listen to more, more episodes because I'm coming up on 10,000 total downloads and it hasn't even been a full year. Um, my anniversary is in November, so we need to get that Rookie of the Year award for your boy. So I, I, I just, I'm going to be fine. I, like, I, I harness my anxiety because I know it's going to be funny later because it's funny right now just thinking about me at this event. Um, and like, I don't even know what to wear. Like right now I'm wearing a shirt that says uh, cool cat and kittens. Like, what should I wear? That's what I'm worrying about right now is what should I wear? My hands are going to be dripping with sweat. I'm already, I'm already anxious about it right now and it's going to be fun. Um, and I'll definitely let you guys know on the next episode, 
but I get so like, I went on like a uh, Zoom meeting with everybody and they were talking about like fiscal years and money and like this and that. And I'm just like sitting there like, yeah, I talk into a microphone to maybe like nine people a week. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just a face, you know, get me out there. I've always, um, I always wanted to help other people. I know, um, I didn't enter Chris Meek talked about that when I interviewed with him. He's like, would you ever like go to a school and like talk to kids? And I'm like, I thought about it and I was like, I don't know if I could, but I would. Cause that would be very uh, anxious and stuff. And like tell my story because a lot of people like this podcast. I realized because I'm just, I fly off the handle, like I'm buddy rich. And it's, it's funny because like, I, I do feel like I'm a little bit different in regards to the other mental health podcasts and no disrespect to any of them. I'm very, I think I, I think I make the most jokes out of a mental health podcast. I, I'm genuinely me. These conversations I have with people like my therapist and especially the one about things not mattering, like that's a conversation I just had and I feel so comfortable being able to do it. Well, yeah, I'm by myself. Um, you ever like, you ever like stand in front of the mirror and like just like fucking do whatever and it's like you're already secondhand embarrassed? Like I'll be rapping in front of the mirror to like run the jewels and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? We do some weird shit when we're by ourselves and we won't tell anybody what we're doing. But if someone like looked in the window or saw us, we'd be so embarrassed. The shit we do. And, and if you say you don't do weird shit by yourself in front of the mirror, you're a fucking liar. Okay? Come at me and say you don't because I'll be peeking through your window. Remember Peepin' Toms? Are there still Peepin' Yeah, there's still Peepin' Toms. I don't know why I asked that. Um, that's kind of creepy. All right, guys. Well, let's finish it up. I actually was going to talk more about suicide, but I think the Suicide Prevention Coalition uh, was enough. Because um, we're wrapping up. It's not like I don't want to talk about it, obviously. But, but, mm, but, mm. It's a 20, 10 minutes episode. But, mm. Next up this week, I have the very funny Jessica Michelle Singleton super funny comedian um it's funny she was on that uh showtime about the comedy store and i was like oh i don't really know her and then dude her people like reached out to me randomly and she's like a big deal like she's blowing up she's very very fucking funny and we had a lot of good laughs she almost broke the record for the longest episode i think she's number two behind my girl felicity feline sex panther but little bio on her. She uses humor to cope with embarrassment, trauma. She has rheumatoid arthritis, which I didn't know what the fuck that was. Learned about it. She's a paid mainstay at the Comedy Store in LA. We talked a lot about Brody Stevens, which I brought up him. Really cool info on Brody Stevens because she knew him pretty well. And uh, it was good talks. I almost made her cry. Um, but yeah, she's a stand-up comedian, big on mental health. Uh, we talk about how depressing and wild life was when she lived in... She fucking moved from Mississippi to Alaska, went to college in Florida, and now lives in LA. She is bananas. Um, but yeah, we knocked this one out of the park, and she was uh, very good. So she has an album coming out called Horny for Death. Remember last episode where I was talking about like the correlation of being choked and like suicide? Like being choked in sex correlating with suicide she's the one who made the joke and i don't know why i think of that so listen to that episode and you'll uh you'll obviously hear that and why it was so funny so music suggestion Haim, don't save me Haim, oh Haim. Haim's a great band three piece girl like they kind of like fleetwood mac a little bit they got a couple songs like it's it's pretty good um and then movie suggestion is uh, This Is The End. I, I I like that movie a lot. It's funny with like Seth Rogen and uh, Jay Barishal and all them. And like, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but some of them die and some of them survive. And James Franco is about to be saved, but then he dies. And it's kind of funny in hindsight because he's been in the news for being like a huge piece of shit. So like, it kind of makes sense why he wasn't saved. And I like James Franco. It's kind of shitty that... A lot of this is just like shitty people at every job. I was talking about this too. Is I don't want to go on a rant because we're gonna close up here, but there's shitty people in every job, and people forget that we're all human. Like I saw a thing about like like judges. We're all supposed to like respect judges. Like judges are like the high power, blah blah. There was a judge that just killed himself because he got caught filming underage kids in a bathroom. A fucking judge. Okay, so yeah. No matter what, celebrities, fucking your mailman, uh, judges, uh, people that work the ice cream machine at McDonald's, they could be pieces of shit, 
Okay? Sorry. But, mm, I love you guys so much. Thanks for checking out another episode of 20 Tim Minutes. Be sure to go to 20timminutes.com. Pretty easy. Same name on all social medias. Come and say hi. Come and buy a shirt. I'll sign it for you. Give it to you. And we'll be friends. But you know what I'm going to say? And I always mean it. And I say it every week. I love you. And have a good one. Also, my cat took a shit. And it stinks. Absolutely stinks. Love you guys. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you are feeling suicidal, please dial 911.